Hey guys, I am Ronak and welcome back to another episode. Today is a kind of a chit chat episode with Libro Review aka Achal. His booktube channel hai, aur she is a good friend of mine. He dropped Instagram pe dear drop everything and read. का सीजन शुरू किया है अगर आपको उसका चैनल चेक करना है तो डेफिनेटली आप जाके चेक कर सकते हो आज हम बात करने वाले हैं बुक ब्लॉगिंग बुक ट्यूबिंग बुक्स डॉट एंड एवरीथिंग अबाउट दैट सो डोंट मिस एनीथिंग एंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो फर्स्ट टेल मी अबाउट योरसेल्फ लेट अप अदर टू ऑल द ऑडियंस ऑफ द पॉडकास्ट ऑन द शाह शो एंड टू ऑल द ऑडियंस ऑफ द लिब्रो रिव्यू व्हाट यू आर व्हाट यू डू हाउ योर लाइफ हैज बीन लाइक फ्रॉम योर चाइल्डहुड टिल टुडे नॉट अबाउट द लिब्रो रिव्यू अबाउट योर पर्सनल लाइफ ओके so my name is anchil a lot of people don't know my real name but my name is anchil and uh, right now i'm doing nothing except liberal review and some other project work freelance work and all those kind of things to support liberal review currently and talking about my childhood and like about myself i have been a very like a child that travels a lot because my dad really likes to shift a lot and even he's like a travel bug or something so every 2 years i've been traveling from a different state to a different state or a like completely different country um i've lived in like bihar i've lived in delhi i've lived in uh, uae sharja umar queen like over there also all like 3 4 emirates or something then i came back to delhi then i am now in ahmedabad so that is what has been happening when it comes to where i've been living and all that so because of that i've become the kind of person who loves traveling the person who cannot survive at one place for a very long time or i can't do something similar for a very long time i need change i need growth i need you know new experiences and all those kind of things so i've become like that and i feel like that is one of the reasons you know the whole travel is one of the reasons why i am conditioned this way then talking about studies um i have completed my 12th standard but uh, i took a drop out when i was in 10th standard i actually got into a lot of social uh, service work so uh, a lot of you may be knowing the nirbhaya case that happened in 2012 so her parents had started a trust and i was the spokesperson of that trust and from there i got a like i got a, a lot of contacts to a lot of like ngos and trusts and other people who were working towards different things like education system cancer and like women empowerment all those kind of things so one of those trusts was uh, here in ahmedabad and it became very difficult for me during my 10th standard because i never went to school even in 10th standard because i had to travel so much and we used to do these like awareness campaigns and everything so uh, it was really really difficult so i shifted to ahmedabad i dropped out of school for 2 years i started studying more about the education system more about like uh, you know sanskrit so i learned sanskrit so that i can dive deeper into our education system and the texts related to it uh, i studied geeta i did all of that i studied french i did a lot in 2 years which is a great example of how much i have developed within 2 years like i did not develop that much in the previous 10 years you know so but then i had to finish school so i did school um i finished my 12th but 12th standard was horrible like towards the end like i did it externally so i did not go to school even then i was still working at that time i was working in the education system field but 12th standard was horrible so much pressure so many things i did not see any use of whatever i'm studying first of all and i was like this is not what i want to do and at that time it was fixed that i have to become an ias so i dropped out of that idea that i don't want to become an ias because it's not what i want to do and it just doesn't fit with me i am like a free bird like traveling and this and that and studying and self education and all those kind of things so i quit on that idea and that is when i was like completely blank i did not know what to do so i started reading books and then ta da live a review happened and now uh, this is me yeah i guess we like we connected almost a year back i guess i don't remember exactly but like when you started live a review on the only on the instagram i guess that's where we both yes. get connected so like talking about like before yes. we talk about the live a review how you survived the lockdown then <laughs> <laughs> See, i'm telling you like there were 
Yes, in the lockdown, uh, we have actually started self quarantining way before the lockdown began, like ten or fifty days before itself. Though we were still going out because in Ahmedabad, like there were no cases and it was a pretty clean city, and then we did not know there was going to be a tsunami of cases after a few days. So I was just like sitting at home, but I was going out sometimes. I was going to have my coffee, my love, and uh, it was fine. And then the lockdown was announced. But before that, only my family, like my brother, was does not live with us. My dad also does not live with us. So they came back home, and it was good because after that lockdown started, if they did not come back home, it will be a, it would be a big trouble. Okay. So when the lockdown started, the first twenty-one days were really cool for me. I mean, I was really sad, and like you know, there were periods where I would be like really, really sad and low and everything, because I I really empathize with people a lot. Like you know, I'm I'm an empath because I feel other people's pain and all those kind of things. So there were moments where I was really down, but apart from that, I just knew how to take care of it and how to take care of myself and the whole family, and we were all to. together and we were having a lot of fun and i had my friend also we would shoot a lot uh because he were he was there to shoot my videos but then 21 days lockdown got over and it got extended and then when it got extended i was like push <laughs> like i knew it is going to get extended obviously but it was just maybe and then it turned into you know a firm yes so in the second phase i was not fine i actually I don't completely take a break ever. I just can't do it. I just like I I can't stop working. So I never take a break, but I did become slow at that time. So I took care of all of those things uh just taking care of myself. But then after that the third lockdown started and since then I've just become used to it. I'm like fine this is how it's going to be. It's going to be like up and down and up and down and that is what is happening right now. Like sometimes I'm really sad but then I'm like uh it's okay. Let me just I have to get out of it. So I know I'm used to it. I know how to deal with it. Exactly. I mean uh, for the nerdy and productive people the lockdown is really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So let's uh, let's the talk about the uh, your first name rather than uh, your first name Libra Rio. What is this? How you did? Yes. Uh, we already talked. Like I already know about it. But in general, to the audience of the Ronak Shah show, to just the new audience, how the Libra Rio mm-hmm. started and what's the background behind it. All right. So as I said, when I was in twelfth standard and I was giving the examinations, I was at a point where I would. cry at night out of nowhere like at all like at all there was no reason there was this one day when i was just lying down and using my phone and my brother was also studying so my brother and we started being in the same class because of the drop out and he was also studying and i just sat on my bed and i just started crying out of nowhere at all and he was like what happened is something wrong this that and there was nothing wrong i mean i couldn't point at something everything was good um also it becomes a little difficult to look at what is wrong because of you know all the privileges that we get so like for me i'm like very grateful for whatever resources i already have uh you know my loved ones so supportive so nice so it's very difficult for me to just be like yeah i have a problem i don't like it it's a process to come to that point and at that time it was really bad now it is much better i've left that and i'm not practicing toxic gratitude or something but at that time it was very very difficult so i was not able to pinpoint and then later on after the examinations were over i felt good so that was really weird like i don't know like was it the pressure i don't know what it was but then i knew for a fact that i'm not made for like this world of you know systematic education that is not helping me grow like personally so for a few days actually i started going to different i have like this workshop idea in my head since i was 16 i thought i will implement it after 18 so i started doing like i just started randomly going to schools and colleges and there was this one college i went to over here in gandhinagar and uh, it was a medical college i went to the dean 
I spoke to him. I talked about my own experience. I talked about how it, you know, how like the doctors are like the future of our country. So they must be very dedicated to their work. They must not just get done with it and something like that. We need that kind of a mindset, and my workshop will help to build that kind of a mindset. He just looked at me, and I don't know. He judged me or something based on my age, probably. And then he was like, "You go and look for your patients in temples. Don't come here." And I was like, patience and temples, it makes no sense. I was really angry. I got so angry. But of course, I did not like shout at him. I just glared at him. I was like looking into his eyes and I was like, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> so he, of course, like he apologized later on. But uh, that really hit me. And I was like, I'm not going to become an IS. And I was becoming an IS so that I serve people. And now this is also not happening. and people are like talking to me and taking me for granted because of my age or something which is not fair because i put in a lot of work in myself uh, <clears throat> in my personal development it's not fair for people to judge me on the basis of my age or even sometimes like my gender or something so i felt really bad so i came back home and i was completely blank and that is when i started reading books like the book was just lying and i was like let me just read it who cares uh, it was a 125 pages book the ultimate gift by jim stovel i've talked about it a lot if you consume my content you will know yeah. and uh, that kind of like really changed my perspective i became so grateful for whatever i have uh, you know all the resources that i already have and not just become grateful but that book also kind of teaches you how you can utilize it now that is a fictional story but it still kind of gives you an idea of how you can utilize the free gifts that you have already so i became very very grateful after that and then i read the alchemist by paulo coelho and then i read think and grow rich by napoleon hill and i was blown i was like whoa like this bookish world is crazy people are giving you lessons and i got think and grow rich for 75 rupees 75 rupees and it's going to earn me money for my whole life exactly so uh it was crazy and i was like wow this is so cool and i was like okay fine let me just share this with the world uh you know these people can stop me but we have the internet nobody's going to stop me on the internet who can yeah. huh? so i just i was watching a football match i'm a big football fan like i used to follow it more before but now i've become busy so i don't follow it as much but i used to be like a big fan and i was watching a match and i'm also a big fan of the spanish culture so i just searched for what books is in spanish and books in spanish is libro and i wanted to book do book reviews so libro review that's it it was there and then i started doing it and i did not expect any response or anything at all but it was really good i did not know like i became really comfortable with the camera i feel like i talk better on the camera when compared to real life <laughs> and all those kind of things i feel more open so yeah now i'm just doing it and it's become my passion and i just want to make it big right actually if we talk about the education and everything then the, this podcast will be go around around one and a half hour longs but we don't have to do that probably on the education or <laughs> on the specific book like a think and grow rich we will do another podcast on that specific book but right now like you started on the instagram uh, then after after a couple of months you shifted on the youtube so how's your journey been on the instagram Now, actually i did not uh, shift to youtube after a couple of months i shifted to youtube after a whole year because uh, before starting libro review itself i wanted to be a youtuber basically but i was not comfortable enough on the camera like i've been comfortable with camera but if you see my old videos and if you see me right now you'll see the difference anyhow exactly. there is something that happens if you start appearing on the camera more often and in like in in front of people in public uh you know their feedback and everything it changes you and for me like i became i've become more like myself now earlier i was like i have to like be the set person who is saying things the mm. right way and oh my god am i touching my face oh my god is my hair okay and, you know all those kind of things exactly. now yeah. i'm like chill it's fine yeah you just have to like be yourself and that's it so this whole be yourself thing is like easy to say but difficult to do but yeah right. so um yeah that's it is like it caught on and i completely forgot what the question was ig <laughs> oh yeah, yeah so i wanted to be the youtuber right so it took me some time to become a actress on camera 
and then uh, i was like what am i waiting for like there is no pressure on me right now i recently started college so because of that i was doing a lot of reporting and i used to be the reporter i never were, i was never behind the camera i was always in front of the camera like i was the best in the whole class so i was like let me just start with youtube you know if i'm doing such serious stuff i can do youtube also so i start with youtube but honestly speaking instagram is very close to my heart because of all the relations that i have built on instagram on youtube yes uh, you know you're building a community and everything and i love youtube so much it's also a better platform where i can express myself even more but when it comes to like building relationships uh, you know personally then instagram has helped me so much and i've met the best people in my life on instagram so i really like instagram yeah i really like yeah i know that because like we start with something one then we go for the another another we just keep on adding the things and just the way you talk about the camera shy even i am also camera shy i was a camera shy that's why i started the podcast because i don't want it to be the face of my videos and then after like couple of videos like around 100 videos i i shot around 100 videos and after that i realized that i can mm-hmm. be a camera person and now mm-hmm. like whenever whoever starts with the journey they have to like they have to make certain type of videos or certain they have to cross the limit then it becomes easier it becomes their daily habit of making video like like right now if it, if i talk exactly. about you like if you want to make a review on think and grow this like without even a thought you can start talking about it without yeah. even thinking about anything so just like that happens but right now what's your preference if you want to go for the instagram or the youtube like what you will choose <laughs> See I can't choose <laughs> I cannot choose one platform they are they have been so essential for me both of them for both the platforms so I really cross them together uh, I've built like the system for myself and now there's this new uh, feature reels on Instagram like I know we had TikTok but TikTok did not have the audience which I already have on Instagram right now so on TikTok when I I did make a few TikToks but I used to feel like nobody is watching me you know nobody knows me they don't know my personality they've never watched any video they don't see my daily Instagram stories they don't know the kind of person I am but on Instagram it's like they know me they see my daily life on my stories they see my youtube videos they know my personality how i am and all those kind of things so making reels on instagram has been really cool for me i'm able to express like my quirky side or you know just do it so it's been really cool but on the other hand if youtube was not there i wouldn't be able to talk about books as much as i'm able to to a much larger audience so honestly speaking it's been easier for me to grow on youtube when compared to instagram given that exactly. youtube is like the second uh, you know search engine of the whole world so you just make content that genuinely serves people and they will find you you know but on instagram there's nothing like that you have to like work harder you have to engage a lot you have to do this that so many strategies and everything and only then people discover you so that way youtube have has been very helpful and again i've met some amazing people from youtube all the people who comment down on my videos they are so nice and they are so supportive and so much love so much positivity i do get some hate comments obviously that's but so and they're so stupid <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's very minimal and they're kind of funny also so the love and everything that i get is very motivating for me so i cannot choose between the both platforms they're both very essential yeah exactly when right now i am thinking like in the lockdown i started youtube i still no idea that it will going to work or not i am just doing the experiment but as i said that main comments have you received the binod the comment i mean i received it <laughs> are there is a person he only commented on five of my videos together like <laughs> on one day at one time i saw like within a few minutes so it means that he did not even watch my videos exactly. but it feels like he had these mean comments stored or something <laughs> and he just came and he typed it that's it and then there are people who just keep commenting on like you know my face or my looks you know stuff like that like that's my normal. clothes and everything yeah i mean the thing is honestly speaking the the day when i got my first hate comment which was very creative i was the happiest person in the world because in my mind it's like if you start getting hate 
you're becoming famous and more people are knowing you exactly. so i'm like who who i'm like hit that mark you know yeah so i know that now right now your youtube is growing oh, really really good like but it took around one year right to grow or yes. just whatever stage right now it is so for the beginners who who wants to start with uh, either booktube or or the bookstagram so what you will suggest them <laughs> see when it comes to bookstagram i will suggest that uh, you know when we come to like the technicalities and everything then please post like every single day because i know for a fact that that really helped me a lot like okay initially i overdid it i used to post four times a day okay mm-hmm. so that was like too yeah. much <laughs> but uh, later on i did shift i reduced the post but i did post every single day and that helped me so much uh, with the hashtags and everything <clears throat> but once you have grown a little bit or even before that engagement is key you have to engage so first of all like when you're posting out the content make sure that it's very valuable it is authentic it is showing yourself you know you're not like copying someone and don't do like plagiarism or something of course but uh, apart from that engagement because if you don't have the money to advertise yourself then engagement can be key but again at the same time your engagement has to be very genuine so you genuinely have to sit down and put in hours into it like i know for a fact that i do put in hours into my engagement when i have to i don't ever just roll down and put the fire signs and then roll down and put the fire signs i don't do that i watch the whole content that's the reason i follow certain people only i don't follow like every person uh, on instagram and i just engage with them genuinely because that will build the person connections and that will only roll out later on and your growth will be assured coming to booktube um again be sure you're authentic you don't have to be like not camera shy or something it's like the camera you know there are no people watching you it's a camera watching you and i feel like you know a lot of people ask me for suggestions when it comes to being an introvert and a camera shy and doing booktube like a youtuber and i just say that just think of it like the person that loves you the most is watching you and that's it so when i am on the camera i feel like i'm the queen of the world everybody loves me and that's it and that's how i shoot so i'm so confident when i think like that if i start thinking of what people will say and all the mean stuff they say then i cannot shoot obviously so that is one thing and secondly your youtube video has to be so like the content has to provide value exactly. like that is the Key most, most important aspect exactly and value does not only mean educational like don't just think that you have to read like a lot of books to provide value not just educational but supposedly even if you're doing booktube you can make funny videos which is making people laugh so you basically just need to engage with people through your videos you need to do that if you don't do that you're not going to grow don't just make random videos and think that you're going to grow that will not happen you need to engage with with the audience in some or the other way and then just keep doing it it will hit off honestly like i know my youtube channel is growing right now but i still know that i'm still going to like i'm building up you know it's like compound effect so you exactly. do a little bit every single day so i know for a fact i'm doing two videos every single week and that's going to collect together and boom it i know that for a fact exactly. i'm waiting for yeah, it yeah exactly very few so, people know that that this thing actually happens like compound effect and exponential curve but very few people actually understand it and like in the exactly. first two videos or even first 10 videos they used to shut down their shut down their shop and just think that okay youtube is not working exactly. for me but you have to give your time like for the same thing happened for the my podcast like around first 10 podcast i received a total 21 listeners only like for the first 10 podcast mm-hmm. after like couple of around 50 or 71 podcast that hit so hard that we almost crossed around 42000 like 42000 we are at listeners so that hit so mm-hmm. hard so after thought i said let's let's see the how the youtube grows so i'm working on it i'm not sure how it will go but looking at your success i'm really proud of you like <laughs> the one year hello yes i'm saying i've seen your i've seen your video it's going to work very very well you you post amazing content 
Well, I'm just trying. I'm just exploring the YouTube right now. I'm not sure all my strategies are going to work in this way or not. But looking at your like in the one year, just the way you've grown up from around zero subscriber to around three thousand one hundred and something right now. I don't know the exact number. Just three point one, I know. But I'm really like proud of you that. Around thirty five hundred. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm really really proud of you. But the main, you know, the main essence of the BookTube is. all about the reviews and whatever you learn you share it, share it you through your videos so what review process do you follow and what review process do you suggest for the authors yeah uh see when it comes to reviews like my way of reviewing has been more like what can resonate with people who don't read a lot or who don't read at all you know uh if you use very difficult words like you know i know all the words now but when i started i did not know all these words like character arc and plot and narration and i don't know time something all those words like i used to see them and i was like what is she saying like i have no what is a what is a character arc i don't know what's a character arc. you know like that it used to be like that so uh what i do is i make sure that my videos will serve people who don't read you know so what happens is when you do that you are anyhow serving the people who will read because they will understand and on instagram my post one minute reviews so my video reviews they will be in layman language they will talk more about the emotions they will talk more about how it will make you feel or what it will do for you so if i'm reading non if i'm reviewing non fiction books it will tell you if it is action based or is it like philosophical you know just to read and all those kind of things if it is fiction that want what kind of emotions does it evoke in you because i feel like that is what the non readers will want but when it comes to like technical reviewing because obviously that is what i'm supposed to do then i make sure that my written reviews are very technical i try to put all put in all those difficult words because i also feel like the you know readers will read the written review more than the non readers because non readers are non readers for a reason <laughs> why will they read the review so um actually that's, that's what i do on youtube i have actually like this is what i want and this is what i'm doing uh i have mixed books with myself so i give a lot of give out a lot of my own personality in my uh book to you videos because books i don't want people to just think that books will just okay you're reading it and that's it you know a lot of people take books as theoretical language and it will not practically help you and like all those kind of things but when what i do is i read the books and i genuinely use them in my own life and then i show people how it is practically helping me okay so that is one thing that i do on booktube and that's been going amazing for me because a lot of people so for example i started working out a few days back and i used a lot of principles from atomic habits by james clear oh. so i made a video on it and because of that i've got a lot of dms telling me that they started working out because they started using those principles and they have stuck to it and they feel so proud of themselves so i feel like yeah that's good you know like don't i don't want to tell people what to do i'm just like sharing my own journey and how books are not only theoretical but at the same time you have to take action books are not going to do anything for you they'll just they'll just teach you things so yeah that's what that is my entire process i even you know i believe that you 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 cannot stick to the one platform at the end of your journey i mean you should at least have three to four platforms in your arena uh, that will help you to grow obviously the way if we ju- just talk about our instagram only then if you only talk about the instagram then our growth is not that great as compared to the podcast or as compared to the book too so what so, do you think like uh, should should uh the new we go for the many platforms or the one platform what your suggestion like you also started on the instagram but even you realize mm-hmm. that instagram like if you post something that goes down to the your feed and hardly that someone will go down and search that feed but but on youtube or on the podcast all the traffic comes from the search traffic i mean it's organic traffic right. you don't have to go for so how many platforms do you suggest for new we uh i feel like there are certain platforms that you have to be on 
if you are a newbie so one is uh, instagram if you're starting with bookstagram then of course instagram and then secondly is you either have a youtube channel or a podcast or a blog any of these three so this is what i like i also learned it from crush it by gary v right. and this is what i say you need to find your own dna you know what you are good at i know for a fact that see i i love my voice of course but at the same time you know my face my eyes my hands they express a lot of me and that's the reason i'm very comfortable with the camera because that's how i'm able to like portray my personality when it comes to voice my voice voice modulation and you know all those kind of things like i'm not i don't know how it is like i've not not really tried a lot but i know for a fact that i'm not completely confident with it yet and when it comes to written words there is nothing absolutely nothing about me that i will be able to portray you exactly. know because no video no voice modulation and how will the other person know what tone i'm talking at you get it so right. that's the kind of person i am but on the other hand my brother he's not a book reviewer of course but uh, he is more active on his blog and on like written content because he is very camera conscious and uh, he's not like he's not into podcasts yet so that's the reason you need to find your own dna and according to that you have to have any of these three platforms like which is either youtube either podcast or a, a blog because this really helps you with the you know seo part it helps you with getting more reach it helps you with getting more attention more people all those kind of things so it's essential i think it's very important and then we come to like other platforms like linkedin we have twitter uh, i'm also there on linkedin and twitter like i don't post a lot over there because i still have not figured them out i'm still figuring them out but and my major platforms are instagram and youtube Right. but those are also important you know so exactly. if you're starting with you know a, a bookstagram account or a booktube account or whatever just just make the id you know just have the account you know just have your yes. name over there and then later on you can just figure it out right. and then we have uh, but then those are still like later steps like make the account but like do whatever you want to do later on right. but uh, we have good reads and uh, we have like amazon reviews they are very important because there is one thing that authors ask for when they come to you like do you have good reviews or you know and good reviews is a huge platform so that again is very essential and i feel like all these platforms together first of all they have helped me with uh, you know the the growth when it comes to numbers with the growth in audience but at the same time it's also help you a lot when it comes to getting the money like you know getting exactly. paid because the more platforms you have the more services you're providing so the more paid you get so yeah but do you think that book blogging is underrated even i mean i believe that it's still underrated it's not that as compared to the other niche like what your thoughts like i believe it's underrated that's why though it's our passion that's it's we it's our hobby it's because of we love we do that but what's your thought is it underrated or not see book industry i've i like i'm very vocal about it um i've said this before when you go to youtube so when i started with a youtube channel or even now i do my research right so i look for how to be a good youtuber or you know like if there are any improvements that i can do or supposedly how to edit your videos and all those those kind of things whenever i watch such a video i never hear people talking about booktube they will talk about everything in the world so they will say that mainstream is fitness health food mm-hmm. those kind of things mm-hmm. and then when they're talking about the non mainstream uh you know parts they'll talk about surfing scuba diving i don't know everything which like it will never come in my mind but they will not say book blogging exactly. you know and this is just like a very like normal small example but that's just how underrated the bookish world is while the like it's books like every single successful person reads read exactly. reading is one habit that every single successful person has in the world and then that habit or that industry is so underrated you know mm-hmm. i feel so much about it and i've been so vocal about it so that's the reason like this is 
it this came on to me like this thought process came on to me very later on when i started with it because uh see i will be very honest about exactly. this i think that if i start food blogging i will get way more audience in a short span of time exactly because really i love right. food yes i love food so much you can see it on my face you know so when i eat food and if i shoot it and i put it somewhere they will love it i am telling you they will love it my exactly. expressions my everything they will love it and also because food industry or like food blogging is so famous i did not know that book blogging is this difficult when it comes to like raising an audience right. so i did have a thought like uh 6 months into bookstagram like should i just start with food blogging because that's more profitable because that's more sustainable and all those kind of things but then that's when i was like shit like probably this is what other people are doing you know they're just leaving it Right. because it's not sustainable because it's not providing for them and i was like no like books have have brought me out of a very dark place right and i will work for it you know and that is when i took on the responsibility on my own shoulders like without anybody telling me that i'm going to work hard for this and i know for a fact that i can speak on the camera i'm very good with it i'm going to use my skills i'm going to learn more i'm going to learn more strategies i will do whatever it takes but i'm never going to leave the bookish world and i'm never going to stop talking about books no matter how many years it takes me to build the audience that may have been raised like you know more like faster when i was into another uh, industry right. so yeah like even i was in that thought process because of how underrated it is but <laughs> exactly this is what i did about is, it exactly even i mean that's the sad part of this thing like you will get paid more on the other niche but you will not get paid more in the book too even the best example when i talk about when i post something about my travel or you know that i tra- travel a lot or go for the trekking a lot mm-hmm. so when i post something on the trekking it gets 10 times higher engagement than my bookish post <laughs> i mean that's how the difference is but okay that's the sad part of the book blogging but you know the whoever the comes in this new phase they see only the money part of it like most of people only see that okay you make money on the book blogging you get paid for the reading but what do you think that the business side of the book blogging see honestly it takes a lot of time to actually create a business side when it comes to book blogging because of the same thing that exactly. we just talked about so uh, like people think that i've started making money like i do make money right now i can live like alone so you know and i can save like i i make good money but i did not start like this i did not make money at all and on the other hand i had to put money into it, it from my own pocket so you know buying all the equipment buying books on a regular basis especially because at that time publishers and authors did not send books to me you know uh doing all these things and then shooting investing my time investing my money getting shoot locations so i had to put in money from my own pocket and then after 2 years it has started giving me the returns you know so uh it's a it's a slow process it will take a lot of hard work simply because bookish world is underrated but at the same time i feel like once you have built an audience and once you are you know genuinely providing the kind of value that the audience wants and you are true and you are honest you know that is when people are ready to give you the money you know so uh, a lot of times like supposedly i i get paid for book reviews so there are authors that don't like it of course and then you know they may bash you or they will leave you on scene and all those kind of things like that happens like they oh you're charging for reading and blah 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 and that happens you know but at the same time i've also met authors who are like wow like you know you're so good with this and of course i'll give you money like take all my like you know all those kind of things i've got people who told me that you charge very less while i think i charge a lot <laughs> so these kind of things happen um It, it all depends time. on your yeah it takes time and it depends upon your own authentic authenticity and how much value you're providing how much services you're providing so yeah you and i believe that at least whoever starting in this new journey at least they should give at least 6 months to 2 years for either bookstagram or the booktube to get the results still don't even expect yes. uh, any penny from it because 
it's already underrated and you will not get that paid obviously we we both have our side business or we have something on your own that's why and we exactly. do this for just for fashion but if you want to completely into book blogging then you have to at least do two to three years for it it's like consider as a college you are investing all your money in the books and the equipments and everything for the three years and after that you get kind of a degree of book blogging yeah. and you will start making money kind of that sort exactly. of stuff so uh, well it's already more time but i don't want to stress this more but what do you think future of book tubing future of blogging and future of book blogging what's your perspective you like? about... <laughs> in general in general, so like, in general. Totally. in general of uh, i feel like especially after quarantine and i feel like quarantining and this whole covid situation has a very huge impact on like on the whole world because i've been seeing a lot of people who have started to read and they're very vocal about it more than they were before like celebrities and all these big people you know who like they read and they're doing whatever they're doing they're successful in all those things because of reading but they never talked about it in quarantine a lot of people have picked up books non readers have picked up books and i know for a fact that my channel or my bookstagram is doing much better in quarantine than normal days because they probably need reviews and they need to know what the book is about so because of that i feel like we're all working together you know people like you me and there are more bookstagram like me kind of everything we are working hard towards it uh we're all working collectively and this again is like compound effect you know so yeah. we will all just given our time slowly and slowly and i'm pretty sure that just within a few years it will all come together and it will boom and bookish industry is going to take over every other industry in the world <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yes as definitely i'm you know i have that thoughts but right now like we are all doing our own stuff and let's hopefully whatever you are thinking will collectively happen that soon Yes. and if like i have another few re- reasons like some of the people asked me to talk about the specific book like if we talk about the think and grow rich so whether you are open for the weekly podcast where we talk about the specific book or like if you have time like most of the people requested that so is it possible from your side of course it is possible from my side i am doing this only this is what i love to do that one is i never say no to like a lot of things and i have a lot of time for this okay then we will plan for sure and actually i want to okay one funny question i have uh, tell me something that nobody knows about you well i'm going to give a funny answer but it is very <laughs> real uh like me one week before my periods when i'm going through my pms and me for the rest of the 3 weeks are two human beings they are <laughs> completely different human beings like i shout at people like crazy i cannot get out of the bed a person who is so like behind productivity and everything i do not get out of the bed i have slept for 20 hours before my periods <laughs> in one month so that's how i become and a lot of people think that i'm always happy and i'm like always pumped and all those kind of things those people if like they, if they see me during my pms they're going to be like oh this is all <laughs> like everything is fake in the world and everything so yeah that is one fact about me yeah <laughs> that thank you so much for taking your time like from your schedule and making so this happen